So before implanting a three-piece IOL either in the bag or in the sulcus, it is extremely important that you insufflate the globe, that is the capsular bag as well as the anterior chamber. And this certainly helps in the injection of the three-piece lens. This is an Orolab three-piece IOL, preloaded that too. So at the outset, uh, you put in some viscoelastic as demonstrated to fill the entire chamber as well as up to the nozzle with viscoelastic. The covering plastic is then removed and then whilst stabilizing the injector system, ensure that the orientation, the positioning of the lens is optimal. The nozzle protector is then removed and under clear visualization, under the microscope, one must attempt to shut the cartridge. Having done so, one needs to confirm that the entire lens is within its housing here and also ensure the position of the trailing haptic and see where the leading haptic lies. Once more against visualization then, push the lens anteriorly such that the leading haptic reaches up to the nozzle. Let's move to the IOL insertion itself. At the outset, ensure that you've insufflated the capsular bag and the anterior chamber with adequate viscoelastic. Don't forget you're looking at very stiff haptics which have a propensity of damaging the posterior capsule. So you want a well insufflated bag. Now we do know that these lenses have got stiff haptics and that is the reason why we use a larger injector cartridge system to actually inject them. Therefore the regular 2.8 incision would not suffice. The next best thing we do have is a 3.2 millimeter keratome and here's how we enlarge the incision to about 3.4 or 3.6 millimeters. Whilst giving counter pressure with the limbs forceps, the 3.2 keratome is introduced into the existing 2.8 incision. It's moved all the way in and out and a few slicing movements on either or both sides should give you an incision which is adequate. Once more you fill in some viscoelastic and now we move to the IOL itself. This is a three-piece IOL made by Orolab, which comes with a pre-loaded butterfly type cartridge with the push type of injector. Observe the position of the IOL in its housing and now we prepare the IOL for insertion. At the outset, viscoelastic, just plain HPMC is introduced into the cartridge that houses the IOL. The protective plastic cover over the lens is then removed. The surgeon then uses a McPherson's forceps and confirms that the IOL is properly sitting within the cartridge. The protective cover over the tip is removed and the cartridge is then snapped shut. Once you've done that under direct visualization under the light of the microscope, one needs to actually slowly push the IOL anteriorly so as to achieve a position such that the leading haptic just reaches up to but not beyond the tip. If it were to extrude beyond the tip and in a different direction of the nozzle, it again causes difficulty in introduction of the nozzle into the wound and into the anterior chamber. Please note the position in which the leading haptic has come to lie. So the surgeon in this case would actually need to turn the nozzle to the right once he introduces it into the wound to allow for smooth insertion of the IOL into the capsular bag. Now the IOL insertion itself. Counter pressure is given by the Sinsky hook through the side port incision and the nozzle is introduced not just within the wound but also into the anterior chamber. And then as discussed earlier, the entire cartridge injector system is turned towards the right and then in a controlled manner, the plunger is now pushed so as to allow for now to start with the leading haptic to come out as desired into the capsular bag and then the injector is turned in a counterclockwise direction as the optic comes out. 
Finally, you're left like this. Very often the trailing haptic is outside the eye, but after introduction of a little bit of viscoelastic with the help of a Kuglin hook, firmly hitching against the trailing haptic optic junction and not letting go then. And then in a downward sweeping motion, the rest of the IOL is very comfortably introduced into the capsular bag. And as you can see, is then rotated horizontally. And this truly completes the insertion of a three-piece IOL within the capsular bag. I'd like to now take you into just a tiny video that actually explains why exactly do we require a larger incision for introduction of these three-piece lenses. So I'd like to just demonstrate what is the difference in the size of the cartridge that is used to inject three-piece lenses. This injector on the left is one that goes through a normal 2.8 incision and is used for the introduction of the one-piece lenses. And this on the right is the cartridge that houses the three-piece lenses. Please note, there is such a sizable difference in the cartridges in the circumference of the nozzles at the end. That is the part that actually enters the incision. This helps us understand why we need such a significantly larger incision to introduce the nozzle for the IOL insertion of a three-piece lens. And I think you should have a significantly decent sized incision maybe 3.2 or even 3.4 or 3.6 to allow no chance of distorting the wound while inserting this lens.